investors typically want something to compare their own portfolio to. The something that I think that we hear the most about is the market, right? We're always hearing about the market doing this, the market doing that, the market's averaged, you know, 10 to 12% over the last 50 years. And then people want to look at their portfolio performance and compare it to that. It's a terrible comparison um, because the market is 100% equity. The S&P 500 is made up of close to 500 um, equity investments. Now, someone who's in retirement would be making a big mistake if they were 100% in equities because equities are, even though the S&P 500 has averaged 10 to 12%, um, you have very, very wide swings in there. You know, good years average somewhere in the neighborhood of a positive, you know, like 15 to 20% and negative years, um, although they happen less often than positive years, and that's why you get a positive return, but that the volatility in the negative years can really hurt someone who's in retirement from uh, two different standpoints. Number one, it creates fear and it can cause people to get out. So if they experience the kind of volatility that's that's in the market for their entire portfolio, they could abandon a really good strategy that would that would do well for them over time. Two, in retirement, most people are usually drawing down on their portfolios. And when you're taking money out of a portfolio, volatility is a very, very bad thing <laughs> because you're having to sell things to get your income that will never have an opportunity to recover. So two, two things that, that um, I wanted to elaborate on in your question there. One was, and I think what you were getting at is, is being biblically responsible mean that we have to take a subpar return? I do not believe that that is the case. So only about 10% of publicly traded companies fail a screen for biblically responsible, um, for consideration in a biblically responsible portfolio. That still means that 90% of publicly traded companies are okay. So, you know, eliminating 10% of, of the option is going to, you know, put a little bit more risk in, but in my opinion, it's worth it. There's been numerous studies done on uh, comparable portfolios, biblically responsible versus non-screened, and there's very little to any difference in performance numbers. Now, does that mean that you can expect 10 to 12 percent in a biblically responsible portfolio? Well, maybe if you're willing to go a hundred percent in equities because that's what you're you're comparing to. So I think that um, when you're following our strategy, none of our strategies are 100% equities. So does that mean that historically, on average, you're probably going to see less of a return than an average of 10 to 12? If you're following our strategies, probably so. We believe that there's far more value in protecting on the downside against volatility than there is in catching every bit of upside potential because volatility is a real killer. It's your friend when you're saving, when you're putting money in because you're dollar cost averaging, you're getting lower share prices as you're putting money in regularly, but it's the exact opposite when you're taking money out. So, you know, for... For any any retiree, uh, and I don't I don't want to make blanket statements because if you're a sophisticated investor, if you understand risk, if you've accumulated more assets than you ever need to spend, like let's say that you're only spending one to two percent of the entire value of your portfolio, if you're only taking one to two percent out every year, you can probably afford to be more aggressive. You can probably afford to be closer to a hundred percent equity position. But for most people, that's not the case. So um, do you have to sacrifice return in order to have a diversified portfolio? Most of the time, yes. Because if you're looking at um, a traditional 60-40 portfolio where you have 60% invested in stocks and 40% invested in bonds, you know, or let's just say you're doing 50-50 because it makes the numbers easy for me to do in my head. If stocks have averaged, you know, 10%, let's just say, over the long term, and you've got 50% there, that gives you 5% towards your net return. If bonds, on the other hand, have averaged 5%, you're going to get a net 2.5% because 50% of your portfolio is there. So 
you know, you add those together and you're looking about a seven and a half percent rate of return for a 50-50 portfolio. So anytime you introduce lower risk, lower return assets into a portfolio for stability and protection on the downside, you're going to come up with a, a lower return. 